Now, when I was uh, working at Apple Reverend to say the NR, I would have meet A&R meetings every week with the Beatles, or as many of them were, were around in the building and could be bothered to come. And so, and we actually, you know, even though a lot of the emphasis in the books about Apple has been on the chaos and, and energy and stuff and, and that went on, which did happen, because obviously at the time the Beatles had giant businesses used between them and other stuff. But people forget that Apple did actually function quite well as a record. They made some good records and had some success. James Taylor was indeed the first artist signed to Apple. But Paul McCartney signed this girl, Mary Hopkin, who you may remember, um, who had that huge hit record, Those Were the Days, which Paul produced, it was brilliant, and so on. I did a record with the Modern Jazz Quartet, it was an incredible film for me. Um, and so many great stuff was done. Now, there was one band we signed who were really good and turned out to be a very important band. And they weren't brought in by a Beatle or by me. They were brought in by Mal Evans, uh, one of the Beatles' roadies. That they're, they're basically Neil Aspinall and Mal Evans. Mal was a great guy. He found this band called The Islands. Brought in a, a demo tape which he made. We all liked it. We signed the band. Um, we made uh, an album with them. And it didn't do particularly well. And then we decided, rather than just make it on the record the same way, we'd actually sort of change course and change the name of the band completely and start again. So that's how the Ivies became Badfinger. Yeah. And Badfinger, as many of you know, went on to become a very successful band. They had hits that Paul wrote for them, hits they'd written for themselves, and they also wrote songs that turned out to be hits considerably later by other amazing people like Harry Nielsen and Mariah Carey and so on. So they ended up making a real musical impression on the era. And probably because of that, they kept going as a band. They had a lot of difficulties within the band, uh, illness and death and, 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 and arguments and all kinds of stuff. But, but nonetheless, the band and its music survived into the future. And one of the people who was in one of the later iterations of Badfinger was none other than our very own band leader, Jeffrey Allen Ross. Quite a shame to have an actual card-carrying member of Badfinger on our stage with this brilliant band and not ask him to do my two favorite Badfinger songs. So with any luck, let's hope they turn out to be your two favorites as well. Okay. Uh, I'll need a little more. Okay, we're going to start off, you know, Carol is here. There's lipstick all over the map. <laughs> Not a COVID thing, it's a lipstick thing. Anyhow, we're going to start out with a song that only went to number 14 because some of you people didn't buy it. So that'll, that'll teach you. If you really like the song, you need to buy it. Now, well, if it was 1972. Uh, this also became a big, big hit back about five or six years ago because it was the last song in Breaking Bad. Are you Breaking Bad fans? Yeah. Uh, okay, that means the rest of you aren't going to watch it. He dies at the end. That's all you need to know. Right? This is called Baby Blue. Yeah.
song, I just want to introduce the core band musicians to you just one more time. Uh, from from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, he lives in Brooklyn, he took, he, he, he took the train over to play the game. Steve Mayo. <laughs> On the drums, from London, England, Steve Holly. <laughs> One of those. Um, next to me, this gentleman and I have been performing for over 25 years together. We call ourselves work wives because we've done so much. Except I didn't get the Neil Diamond game. Other than that, uh, and he's, he was born here in Manhattan, he grew up in Yonkers, Bill K. And uh, back here, <laughs> back here, he's originally from Milwaukee, he now lives in Pasadena, California, and he's played on all more records, if, if you think of a song, you'd be amazed, he played on, on Rich Curl, he played on I Am Woman, <laughs> he played of course on all those James Taylor records and you know, all that stuff from Peter. Uh, and, and we found out there, what? What? I know, you, you hate to be made a deal of. I know, you just hate it. That's what I'm doing. Uh, and his first record was uh, Brian Highland's Gypsy Woman. Gypsy Woman. That was the first record he made. I thought that was cool. Leland Sklar. We'd also like to say thank you, New York, for welcoming us home and making such a great evening after a long, long time away. So thank you guys very much. Uh, also, Leland Sklar hates this fame so much. He has a book for sale outside the line. Uh, last but not least, and certainly not least, the fearless leader of this band and most of the other bands we play with, Mr. Jeffrey Allen Ross. Although I'm most proud of being a radio sidekick now. That's, for those of you that, that listen, to, who listens to the serious radio show? Okay. So, uh, you probably heard this song once or twice, and it never gets old. Thank you. 